Ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I just want to just let you know, first of all, I am not a doctor, all right? I am just giving a talk on uh, studying medicine in Australia and New Zealand, all right? So I just want to clarify that first, all right? So don't expect me to, you know, give you any medical terms whatsoever. But I'm basically going to guide you along with the process of uh, how we do things in IDP itself, all right? And of course, the people who are tuning in, uh, we welcome you right now. And I believe a lot of you have questions, uh, especially with regards to applying for medicine um, for a university in Australia itself or New Zealand. And today, I'm, I hope that I can basically alleviate any concerns, any doubts that you might have. What are we going to be covering today? So this is a content overview, all right? Uh, we're going to look at who, are, who is IDP as a whole, all right? We're going to look at the overview of the pathway to medicines, uh, course accreditation, application process, alternative pathway, and of course, for the times that we live in, what, what is the update on COVID? You know, I'm pretty sure that's something all students and parents are very curious about. And of course, how can we help? All right. So, so who are we? Just to give you a brief overview. All right. IDP education. Um, of course, basically, we are in Singapore office. We are the world's largest international student placement company and also co-owner of IELTS. Uh, we have been around uh, 50 over years of international education. And of course, we've been established in 1969 by the Australian government. And I think that's very important for you to know, because I think when you come to a agent, you know, you, you come to someone who wants to, who you need help from, you want to know that we are credible, that we've got your back, we've got the right kind of partners. And I believe these uh, will basically help you understand who are we partnering with and how what's our experience like, you know, uh, some of the shareholders, uh, it's important for you to understand that we are 50% owned by Education Australia. All right, it's an entity that's owned by 38 Australian universities. So you know that we've got you covered. And there's, I would like to say there's no sort of biasness. You know, we don't just lean towards certain universities. We're going to be able to give you uh, counsel and advice holistically and, and, and very impartial advice. So what is the pathway? What are the pathways in medicine school for someone who might want to start earlier, basically, or maybe your results did not come out the way that you expected them to. And, and you feel like, hey, you know, I still want to pursue medicine, but then what is an alternative pathway? You can look at foundation year. Foundation year can range somewhere between eight to 11 months, all right? Uh, of course, there is a slightly longer pathway where you go through a bachelor degree pathway. You know, for example, you do uh, a bachelor of biomedical science, you know, a bachelor of science, basically. You do a three-year program. Uh, honest, it's not required. And then subsequently, you can go into a graduate entry to do four more years. Of course, you want to know that you're taking a course that's accredited, right? That's something that's recognized so they can practice it in Singapore, okay? So it's important for you to know that the programs that, of course, that I'm going to be sharing about today, uh, it's recognized, it's accredited by the Singapore Medical Council, and of course, the Australian Medical Association and the New Zealand Medical Association. How can we help you with the application process, okay? This is where we come in, right? Uh, we've been doing this for a very long time. We can advise you, guide you the application process. And of course, when, when required to, we can link you up with some of the university partners, uh, such, uh, very similar webinars such as this, so you can have additional information for uni-specific information. So these will be the schools that are recognized for medicine, okay? And then for New Zealand, you will see University of Auckland and University of Otago, Okay. Uh, and you'll see this slide, it says your first year remote learning. Okay, why am I telling you this? Because this is a very popular question among parents and students, especially because of COVID. People are saying, I want to study medicine. I want to go abroad to study, but then I know there's restrictions. So can I still, am I still eligible for a medicine program? Can I still start a medicine program? Uh, well, not for all the universities. So just to give you an overview, sc the schools on the left, Yes, you can start your medicine program via remote learning, all right? That means you can start your, your, your medicine modules, your units, your school via online modules first. And then subsequently, when, of course, the travel bubble, we kind of like sort that out, you can fly over to take the remaining of your program, all right? And the, the programs on your right, University of Sydney, University of Auckland and Otago, uh, they do not do remote learning. They require you to be on campus to begin your program. So I think this is very important for you to understand that and to know so that when you apply, you are also aware um, of these details. So this is basically an overview of a year long process that I mentioned. Uh, usually NS guys usually have the advantage of uh, 
having the option to take ISAP one year in advance because you're an army and you only come up two years later. So you can actually do ISAP because it's actually eligible. Those the next time you can retake an ISAP is after one year only. So it's possible for you to take an ISAP earlier on and then for, the, for whatever reasons, you're not happy with the results, you want to do it again, you can attempt it after one year. Okay, so as I, it has it's mentioned in the timeline, you'll notice the ISAP test, you can give it a try um, in January 2020, you know, or May 2020, your second, you know, you're in the option, second cycle for you to try. And then after that, apply for your medicine in the following year, which is this year, for example, January 2021. Okay, and then by March, you need to have sub submitted all your applications for your Australian New Zealand schools. Uh, for deadlines for UWA, you'll notice it's somewhere in May. Um, and I said, that's your second cycle of ISAT. And usually you would want to do that if you want to be eligible for most of the schools, if not all. And by June, you need to submit for Monash. You get your rolling interview start for UNSW, um, CASPER test for UWA. And then by July, interviews are already being issued for Nash, CASPER test likewise for UWA. August, you're already getting the first round of offers. And by September, you're getting offers for UWA. And then October, you're looking at universities such as University of Sydney. And by November, you're looking at uh, UNSW, Auckland, Otago, and your foundation applications. And of course, you start your school the following year. COVID updates. I think this is a very popular question, okay? Borders remain closed at this point of time, okay, for Australia and New Zealand, okay? So I think it's very important for you to know, we always hear rumours, people always say, oh, you know, I heard my friend can fly over my brother, my sister, my auntie, my uncle. Uh, not sh to be to be very honest with you, uh, we are in very close contact with a lot of the universities, and they are constantly updating us. Um, so when it's available for you to um fly over, you can. All right, and we will notify you, and the schools will notify you with regards to flying over. So just be aware of that. Okay, in the travel bubble, still in the midst of discussion, we are supposed to start it. Uh, but of course, that has been rescheduled and postponed. So um, we will update, we'll continue to update you uh, via the counsellors. And of course, the respective universities have updates on their respective website with regards to COVID updates. So this is basically an overview of IDP Singapore services. And I believe um, this might have been covered previously, but this is just a brief overview. We basically assist you with a consultation free of charge. We don't charge you. Okay. And of course, we have events such as this where you can meet the representative and the faculty staff. And of course, we help you apply, um, guide you the whole process. And of course, accepting the offer, um, applying for visa, we assist you, we guide you with that whole process. And should you require accommodation, we can help you with that too. So basically, it's like a one stop for all. Um, that's where we come in. All right? and of course, we want to do our very best to make sure that you choose the best program and you secure the program. So uh, in closing, basically, I'm coming to an end. This is our address. If you're not aware, we are located at Cathay. Our operating hours are there. Uh, at this point in time, we are both online, okay? And uh, our offices are going to be open again, all right? Uh, uh, now that the, the rules have basically changed, uh, you can always visit us in our office. If not, you can always uh, log in via the link that's indicated there for our virtual office. If you're, if you're not comfortable coming down, you can always visit us via Zoom, and we can basically have a one-on-one -on -one session with you um, so that you can clarify your doubts.